good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are right now. Um, thanks for joining tonight's stream. Got my coffee ready. Cheese, everybody. And so, what is this? Um, today we are going to talk about a brand new, I mean, in the literal sense of it, uh, it just got released today. Uh, a brand new library named uh, Soaring Strings from Musical Sampling. I just got aware of these guys kind of four or five days ago uh, through an announcement on Facebook. And I watched the walkthrough and I immediately knew that I want to have this stuff. And downloaded it a few hours ago, had a little really a little play with it already and uh, just thought with diving in deeper into what this is what it can do uh, I just do a stream and let you take part if you don't mind if you mind you don't need to watch it <laughs> sure thing thanks for joining and yeah what is it so soaring strings I think the name is plenty uh, Plenty self-explanatory. Andy Ellen checking in from LA. Best wishes to LA. We may have a beer in uh, about six weeks. <laughs> then I will be in LA. Looking forward to that. Um, yeah, soaring strings today. Um, I love sleek, clean interfaces of simple libraries. And this is uh, an extraordinary example of a really sleek interface design because that's all you got. Um, name on it, company, two buttons. That's it. Um, one might think, okay, I'm a little bit disappointed. I want to tweak stuff. Uh, believe me, no need to tweak stuff with that. So uh, it's actually full string section, violins, violas, uh, celli and basses, legato playing. So you got only sustains and uh, legatos. This is all that the library concentrates on. It retails at $199, goes up to $249 after introduction period. And well, as I said, I just had a very, very little play around with it. Um, came up with a kind of little theme idea uh, and first come first get. Let's just listen to what I've done here and then we dig in a little deeper. So this is what I did in kind of 10 minutes or something like that. So just a little something that I threw together it actually started by um, fiddling around a little bit with the violins. So just played a little bit around and then came up with this, uh, this theme, melody, whatever you want to call it. And yeah, so what is it actually? As I said, uh, no freaking controls on that. Uh, you can actually control the mod wheel dynamics, whether they go down to the softest dynamic or if you can fade to silence with a mod wheel. So down to zero. 
and the other one is the repetition button and this is pretty pretty great uh, a lot of string libraries out there lack the um, the control to actually dictate the bow change when when the string players are um, asked to change the bow direction and uh, with a simple repetition on the same key that you're on you can actually trigger a bow change manually so if you have a legato line so this is pretty cool so it allows for yeah pretty great expression uh, with with a real feel of a bow change And also, uh, you can play it according to your tempo of the piece that you're working on. So that's pretty cool. And first of all, this is pretty much that there is to this library. Um, they included uh, the sustain patches as well. The difference between the legato and the sustain patches, obviously, that you can play polyphonic and that you get one more dynamic layer in the full. So I think the violins uh, have four dynamic layers and the full sustains have five. Really smooth transition from loudest to softest. Actually, I did not change that. So let's once more. The legato, you uh, the the uh, not the legato, the vibrato you can hear is actually baked in so there's no control on that i'm personally fine with it um, because uh, if i need some non uh, vibrato patches i would go for a different library in the end i mean the name is soaring strings not um simple plain strings or whatever so there's no no vibrato patches in there Everything is very, very bold and expressive uh, vibrato. And then another add-on that included is Sustained Soft, which is just the first three dynamic layers. Also pretty nice sound uh, it goes on with a viola legato so there's no violin one and two it's just violins really really expressive same with the sustains here as with the violin so you got the full pack with five dynamic uh, crossfades on the mod wheel And 
the soft patch as well with only the lower third, uh, lower, the three lower dynamics. I also think that they kept the section size pretty small. It's as far as I can remember. Let me check that again. Um, they haven't stated it on their website. Let me take a look again. Um, <laughs> features. Well, medium sized ensembles. So it definitely sounds smaller than the big contenders with a uh, kind of 14 or 11 violins. I would guess it's kind of six or seven, maybe three cellos, two basses, something like that. Um, anyway, not definitely stated, but mid-sized uh, sections. And they really sound kind of intimate. So the regatta reacts really, really well to the playing. So it's really kind of a plug and play library. Load it up, play something and you're good to go. It has its limits, so you can really play runs or something like that, but that's not the aim of the library anyway. So, um, But you can get to pretty fast legato lines uh, with just this one patch from really slow. So if you go too fast, it starts to get a little bit bumpy in the legatos. But as I've mentioned, uh, I think that's not the initial aim of the library. So uh, there are other libraries that are specifically there for the purpose to play runs or do that kind of stuff. So but if you keep a relatively normal speed up to, yeah. actually the range of the cellos here. Basically, I don't think that they really sound so small. They kind of sound clean in a good sense. And again, you got the soft. Again, played with pretty heavy vibrato. So 
really, really great sound. And last but not least, the basses. Okay, these go up to C3, I guess that is. They go out of basis. C2, I mean. And again, the sus patches. And the soft layers, last but not least for the bases. Welcome, whoever just joined in. We're talking about soaring strings today, just downloaded the library it got released today brand new string library special focus on legatos and sustains i personally am really 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 sad about the fact that they don't have more articulation i would love a full library but i'm pretty sure that these guys shoot something afterwards to to get the basic articulations covered Damn, the stream title is wrong. You're so right with this. Uh, sorry, let me fix that. Hands on soaring strings. Thank you for this. And so stream title should be fixed now. Thanks for this. And Yeah, for those of you who came later, I downloaded the library this afternoon, just had a little bit of play around with it, wanted to dig deeper once we are assembled here at the stream. And uh, yeah, this is a little piece that I come up with for just playing it a little bit around with the legato. So have a short listen again, and maybe we're going from there to come up with a little cue or something. Uh, this is all we have so far. So, honestly, I'm pretty blown away by this sound. It's just gorgeous. It's, I have a feeling that I've been waiting for a string library like that. Uh, and that's why I'm so sad about the fact that it's only the Gatos, but not the other articulations. But we will see if we can find something to layer on top to cover the other articulations there. I already tried something. I may go from there. Um, so yeah, let's not, uh, stop with that. Let me just take a bit of coffee here and what I tried is to, uh, to cover my other articulation needs because only legato, I don't, I didn't want to do some kind of slow elegic uh sad string piece or rather try something more elaborate and um yeah so let's bring in another instant effect here 
And as I've said, I tried something in the afternoon that I want to dig deeper now to enhance the range of articulation. And this is actually with uh, the original Audio Bro Lass. Uh, let me put that into a folder here. And as I have mentioned, the section size is from soaring strings is uh, kind of mid-size ensemble, not the big stuff. And therefore, less is actually pretty cool since it has, at least the full version, has the DVZ ensembles. So you got the violins split up into section A, B and C. And when I, for example, just take A and B, so only two thirds of the whole ensemble, let me put that to MIDI channel one. Then It's a way smaller sound than, let me bring that, uh, well, let me bring in the section violins full spiccato. So um, when I compare that to the full section, it gives me just a little bit more clean sound. That's the full section. And this is missing the C section from the first violin. So uh, I'd rather go with that. And there is actually something pretty cool out there. I always had the feeling that less was, for my taste, a little bit too bitey, too... Well, it's hard to describe. There were some frequencies in there or are. Besides the fact that it's totally bone dry. Um, it can be a little bit hard to get them right in the mix. And actually, it's not long ago that I found a company uh, who did impulse responses for less to actually change the sound a little bit based on uh, your um, base where you are right next to the stage or near or far away. So they really got that uh, with the depth of the instrument in the in the room. And also what they did is some slight uh, EQ changes, I would say, that they baked into the impulse response. And I'm actually going to load, where is it? Uh, Reverberate is my weapon of choice here. And I'm going to the browser and it's Hollywood Sound Last Edition. And these guys did uh, different sounding variations for every section of LA scoring strings and even a Sardino emulation, which works pretty cool. Uh, I won't go into detail too much on this. I just load up what I consider the best sound, in my opinion, for um, the last samples totally wet because I don't want any dry signal. They are going to substitute or process the signal. Um, I don't want to add it to the original sound, but change the original sound. That's why I'm going fully wet on the insert for this reverb here. And basically, compared to without, It's really a nice sound and it blends very well with uh, the soaring strings. And as I say, you get different positions. You can go to the stage, you can a little bit more away from the stage or even far away from the stage. 
I go with a full body stage. Uh, the more uh, you go into uh, medium body, light body, natural, uh, the more natural it comes to the original sound of the library. So natural stages. Very close to the original sound. Well, you still have that room information. And to match it with the soaring strings for now, I go with full body stage on this one. And I send this to the last chord group. And add in the other guys. Let's rename that Lass. Funny enough that I'm doing something with Lass here when we want to talk about soaring strings, but as I've said, soaring strings is so far legatus only. Uh, what is happening here? Something's really, really messed up right now. So, um, well, shit happens. <laughs> that was a classical Cubase crash. I have no idea why, but okay, uh, we're back. Actually, it uh, brought me to the fact that I forgot two more patches that are included in the library. Uh, actually, no, crashes actually do not happen often. Uh, so, not really an idea what happened. But, okay, we'll see if that happens again. Maybe it was the, the reverb stuff there. Um, it doesn't happen too often, luckily enough. Um, I wanted to open up the full ensemble patch. This is something more that they put in. Really nice for sketching out. This is the soft patch. We got the full patch as well. like the attack there. soft patch as well.
really, really great sound. Okay, so where have we been? Let's try again. I want to add in contact to actually load up less. So let's do that again and see if we So what's your standpoint opinion on praise performance ratio of soaring strings? Well, actually, um, it's actually not an easy question because uh, definitely the pricing also uh, may be perceived differently in different uh, for different people. But um, overall, I think it's well, well worth the price um, because it just sounds bloody amazing and adds a lot to. Uh, to legato lines so people may think it's pricey with uh, 250 for just sustained notes but if these no sustained notes get even a little bit more close to the real thing in terms of sound um, just imagine what you would pay for a real string section <laughs> so uh, I think it's well worth the money that it costs So, okay, once more. Last. And be spiccato. And let's try this again now to get the sound right there. Actually, this violin one. Loading that guy again and going with Hollywood sound, violin one, full body stage. Get the mixer all wet and put that to zero. Well, I mean, you can grab it for one ninety nine right now for for a week or something like that as an enterprise. Um, is two fifty pricey for a great sounding library? I'm not sure about that. Whether I would say it's pricey, uh, it's definitely not cheap. But you really get some great results with it. At least I hope so. <laughs> I'm working on it right now. <laughs> Okay, that's uh, the sound with the impulse response on it, and that's without, and that's with. Uh, let's keep that for now, do another four tracks here. And that's actually violin one. Go with violin two, A plus B, spiccato, viola. I'm actually going to load C, section C here for this. Celli and basses. So, just want to cover some more articulations since soaring strings don't have these. I try to get the feel of the tone as close as possible uh, with the stuff that I have at hand. I just had a little try around this afternoon before I started this stream and actually found less to be the best contender for me uh, to kind of get close to the sound of the other strings so to layer them and bring in different articulations 
outputs here. This is less. And load up some more stuff. First of all, save the whole thing. And then we're going for violence 2AB. And I put these two on the same MIDI channel, so I can play them from one channel and send that to output 2. Then load up the violas. I decided for section C there. Output 3. Channel 3, that's fine. Then we have the cellos AB. Bring these down, send them to output 4. And this is MIDI channel 4. And last but not least, the basses. And we go. I may try around whether I use A, B, or C. I think they assembled two basses or three for soaring strings. So I'll try to get as close as possible to that sound with L, A scoring strings. And this goes out to channel 5. Saving again, just in case Cubase crashes again. I don't hope so. So this is violin 2. Actually, last gets another color here. So, sending all these guys into last short group. These are, I have them left from my fumbling around this afternoon, so that's why these subgroups are already there. And um, so let's go reverberate for violin two, just changing the preset here, as you can hear, see here, violin one. And now I'm going for violin two, full body stage, loaded. There it is. Copy that over. Go for viola. Full body stage. Okay. This is this is Chelly, and this is the basis. Copy that over. Change the impulse response to cello. Full body stage. There we go. And last but not least. The basis uh, browser full body stage. There we go. Okay, so now I got the shorts, the short spiccatos from last. Cellos, uh, violos, I meant. And these are not going out to the subgroup. Didn't link the channels. Last short, last short, last short. Well, we can give it a try when I... Let me add in another MIDI channel here. So, putting in Violin Legato. That way I can show you what I did there when I compare the soaring strings and the LA scoring strings. Or why I chose them to enhance my range of articulations. So violin A and violin B. And these are both MIDI 
channel six, meet channel six. So now I loaded up the less legatos. the soaring strings so they have a way heavier vibrato but the sound is at least close it's a little bit more dry let me create another channel here and send these guys to I'll put six. Bring in, this is rather long. Copy that over and send these guys to left longs. Actually, I got some more reverb on that group. So it matches the sound more. So again, soaring strings. And less again. Could even layer that. So that's pretty nice. So this gives me the possibility to uh, add in other articulations that I don't have in soaring strings, like tremolo or uh, pizzicato or uh, even aleatoric effects and stuff like that to enhance my range of articulations since soaring strings is only legatos. But, uh, well, actually, let's try it. So, let's just bring in some spiccato sounds underneath that melody here, that little part. So... Quantize that a little bit. Bring this guy's a little bit down. Mugo is following. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate that. Uh, this is 16th. Quantize that. Quantize that a little bit. Get rid of the last guy here. And. Or 
maybe let's try a different bass section there. Let's see, what can we try? Um, bass is spiccato. Let's try B. Just don't like the sound of A alone. Sounds a little better. Let's go with that. Quarter notes. So, uh, and that way we can actually go from there. What do we have? And back to the soaring strings, because actually this is what I wanted to talk about today. So um, we'll bring back in last a little later, I guess, um, for some more articulations. I uh, want to go back to the violins here. I mean, even pretty fast trills are, to a certain degree, convincible. Let's just put a bat here first with the full strings. D suspended and D major. Too far off from where we started. So, um,
Hmm. So what, what did I do? Uh... That was nice. Hmm, let's just wreck all that in. That's a nice progression. Grimus is following. Thank you very much for the follow and uh, welcome to this nifty little channel. Hope you like it. Um, that's actually a nice progression here. Let's bring the volume down a little bit here. Gonna flesh that out a little bit more on the string section. Just wanted some basic chord guideline here. Always have trouble with attack time when doing quicker things using stock instruments. Will you say it's possible to imitate soaring strength with another library? Um, hard to say. Um, well, let's just do a quick comparison. Let's take the violins, for example. Um, let's load up another contact instruments. Mm, send that over just to have the same. Uh, let's see. So. Cine strings. That's actually a good idea to just see it next to each other. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, uh, we wait with that. Let me just check something. I think. Well, actually, that library is sitting on an SSD. No idea why it's so slow at loading right now. Uh, we'll care about that later. So let's open up um, String also, also, also. also Audio Bro Legato. Let's load up uh, Berlin Strings. Uh, main collection, single articulation, violence one, legato. So
cinematic strings, violence one. And let's check. Adio, Adagio, violence. Let's take the village legato. So, all same volume. So this gives us something to compare. Other violins. So once more, here's um, this is. Wait a second. Let's send that to wrong strings. To be fair, since that Larry also gives us the opportunity to do so, we should change the symbol, uh, the ensemble size to, let's bring it down to eight players. Back to soaring strings. Violins. Next one is, let me check that again, um, Berlin Strings. It's a little bit softer, so let's turn that up a little bit in volume. No, not again. Um, are we frozen again or not? Cubase does not react at all, so I'm going to restart back in a minute. I think I figured out what it is. So, back again. I think I figured out what is actually happening since it was the second time that Q is crashing. And Q is has a kind of strange thing going on when I hover um, with the mouse upon the top of the QA screen. There's some kind of window that pops up that allows me to add in these uh, uh, symbols and stuff like that. And so somehow when I have that in between, usually I don't fiddle around with the mouse up there. And when that window comes, QA seems to crash. No idea why. Might check in with Steinberg on that. So we have actually been on a comparison between the 
file and legatos from soaring strings and other string libraries. Uh, let me load that up again. We had the string ensemble violins. From what I can tell so far, they really have a unique sound. Um, but well, let's see where we end up with. I had Berlin strings, single articulation violin legato. Uh, we put that volume a little bit up there. Then I loaded up cinematic strings, violins. Bring this down and I loaded in actually a DO Adagio violins ensemble and I went for instinct so put these guys down and last but not least first of all safe <laughs> in case we're crashing again and then let's have another look at Cine strings. No idea why these take so freaking long to load. They are actually streaming from an SSD. Anyway, uh, caring about that last. Um, Okay, need to wait for these to complete. Uh, otherwise, I can't get the window out of the way. I think I just need to resave Cine strings. Maybe I haven't done that. Would be better because I want to get to these on Monday uh, in the stream. So that will be a very long string stream if every patch is going to load like that. Um, so I'm gonna fix that during the weekend. Hopefully, there we go. Okay, Cine strings. last but not least. Um, yeah, definitely need to resave that. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. So, back to comparing. Other violins. This is soaring strings. This is audio bro with a A section of the first violins. And they are not running into my reverb. Now we have the same settings for both of the libraries. the same line for both of these. Let's go with that. So this is soaring string, uh, strings and then violins one section A. What the hell did I play here? <laughs> it wasn't too complicated. But, um, okay. the wrong section there we go
So that actually allows us to compare. Once more, this is now Audio Bro Symphony String Ensemble. Well, it's definitely different. Uh, let's try the next one, which is uh, Berlin Strings. And to be fair to the other libraries, I won't use the same played MIDI file, but just play it again. Okay, give me a click and mute this one. actually be totally cool if we would use Berlin strings. <laughs> Different MIDI channel. Uh, let's stick with one here and name that SES to three. So this is Berlin strings. Definitely not as much vibrato, although Berlin Strings offers uh, a strong vibrato, so we're going to change that. That's actually pretty close, I guess. Soaring strings again. Berlin strings. A little softer in sound. So let's check um, cinematic strings. Get rid of these guys. really tell that it's so much different. Less vibrato, but in terms of sound quality, it gets pretty close to uh, soaring strings. Let's have a look at Adagio. Actually, let's change this. This is the Adagio Violin Legato. Uh, I didn't use expression here. Um, I'm gonna use uh, Adagio. Legato's Violin's Legato. Uh, 
so. No. Okay, there's only one dynamics knob. Recording that again. Totally different ballpark in terms of sound. I mean, you really, really hear that uh, extensive emotional quality from uh, soaring strings. I mean, there's a reason why they named them soaring, right? So uh, it's really built for these um, grandiose melodies. Maybe it would be more fair not to use a daggetto or a daggio, but rather um, agitado. So, grandiose legato. Let's use this one. Maybe that's closer to the sound of soaring strings. Just to keep things fair here. And this takes a little moment to load. So. Okay, let's go with the grandiose legato. Maybe even with a Mancini preset here. Or rather the sustained crossfade. So... Yeah, definitely Adagio or Adio, the string line has its own sound. It is fitting for some situations, for others it may be not. Uh, in direct comparison, uh, from uh, that's actually uh, Agitado. Uh, I think that's the fairest contender from the string family from Adio to compare with uh, violin legatos, uh, with, uh, with the soaring strings. And again, the soaring strings. Okay, compared to Ideal, they sound a little bit uh, lighter. So, Agitado is a bit heavier in terms of sound. Last but not least, we have Sinister Strings. Let's record these just to have it safe. sound a little bit more raw. Okay, and last but not least, let's uh, 
get in another one to have the comparison, at least with what I have at hand. I mean, there are tons of other string libraries out there and I don't have Mural and Sable. So the Spitfire stuff there, I'm missing that. But you just can't have every string library unless you have 10 terabytes of SSDs. I'm at four terabyte meanwhile. <laughs> and that's pretty much filled up. Um, so let's go with the first violins. So let's go with the bow change legato to have it safe. Um, legato bow change slur. So actually, would you be so kind to start to load? Thank you very much. Uh, I think I may change that, not the slur, but the regular bow change legato. So this way, once it's done, it should be faster to substitute the patch. There we go. Um, replace. Woo, that was fast. Why doesn't it load up that fast initially? Um, so this is Hollywood strings. Violin one bow change legato. And this guy needs to go to the same reverb group as well. Uh, Soaring strings. Uh, what SSDs do you use? SATA or PCIe? Uh, SATA, uh, all hooked up to the main board via SATA. Okay, so last in line for this little nifty comparison is Hollywood strings. Here we go. And these are actually controlled via expression and not through mod wheel. Sorry for that. Lolly Lol 1975. Hey Dirk. Hey Lolly Lol. Nice to see you. So let's get right in. Um, once more, this is soaring strings. The actual question who didn't get it was uh, if any other library can get to the results that a uh, soaring string uh, gives you. Uh, I just thought, okay, load up some of the other stuff that I have available and uh, check it out how close we can get to uh, the soaring strings so this is your original the library we're talking about today then audio bro symphony ensemble strings Definitely a nice sound, but near, not even close to uh, the violin legatos from Soaring Strings. One more short listen to Soaring Strings. Berlin Strings. And I changed that to the to the strong vibrato and that way it gets pretty close in terms of sound so to answer the question do you get close to soaring strings with other libraries as well definitely you get close to that sound for example berlin strings on the other hand for berlin strings you invest a good 1k obviously you get way more articulations than just uh, sustain and legato so for the 199 uh, Soaring Strings does a pretty good job. 
Let's see how cinematic strings is doing. First of all, soaring strings. And cinematic strings. To be honest, I'm really surprised how close cinematic strings is to soaring strings. So, again, soaring strings. And b cinematic strings. It's a tad softer. I think the the soaring strings are a little bit more, I wouldn't even say aggressive, but uh, have a little bit more bite to them. So, Adio Agitado. There is not really reverb in cinematic. I turned off the reverb from the internal. It's on here, but uh, that's actually my no verb patch. Um, they all use the same reverb bus right now, so um, no difference there. Um, ATU Agitado um, is a different sound, definitely. It definitely has its place for a certain uh, uh, for certain areas, but uh, when I tend to use or want to use soaring legatos or soaring strings uh, and looking for this sound, then it's definitely not a deal that I'm looking for. Um, then we have cine samples, cine strings. So, um, yeah, Cine Strings is totally... So I just need to give a note here. So, uh, and last in line was um, Hollywood Strings, East West. That was Hollywood, and back to. So, um, to answer the question finally, you definitely get close to the sound with other. There are some that get closer, um, but it fills a little bit a niche that hasn't been covered by other libraries that well executed. So, actually, um, the soaring strings are extremely playable and uh, they react awesomely to, to the playing. And one thing that they nailed is actually the repetition stuff. And this is something that not many libraries have done before.
that well executed scripting wise so you just repeat the key and you get the rebo Do you know anything about music samples future plans or they consider making more declarations? So uh, just to be clear about that, I'm not affiliated with music sample. I just bought the library as anyone else today. Um, I can imagine or actually to say I really hope that they extend this range because I really love the sound. They sound really woody, really uh, they, they are meaty, they got something to them and if they keep on sampling that way for um, if they keep on sampling other articulations for these kind of strings, it would be awesome. I can see this at least ending up in my template as a regular part for uh, layering with other libraries, like I'm starting here with um, LA scoring strings to layer these guys. And. Actually, I didn't save after we did some string stuff here, so let's just fix that for a little moment. Uh, I didn't save these guys, so this is violin two. This is viola. This is celli. And this is double basses. I mean, I actually wrote uh, the developer that I plan on doing a stream on the library. Uh, and But I haven't gotten any information uh, whether they, and in what time they plan to uh, enhance the parts of the library and uh, record or publish new articulations. So sorry, I can't be of further help there. So let's bring that to an end here. Have you ever considered trying one of these input instruments that allow continuous pitch change like Roly? I actually tried the Roly when I was at NAM in 2013 and also at the German Musikmesse last year uh, and was totally, uh, <laughs> it just was not my thing. Uh, I guess you need to practice this baby. Uh, it might be interesting. I'm not that good as a keyboard player to really uh, dive into these kind of controllers. Um, so. Uh, I'm perfectly fine with just controlling things with iPad and a regular keyboard. Uh, that's enough for me. Unless you're Jordan Rudess and you just tried the first time and <laughs> instantly blow the audience's mind. Uh, I saw him performing on the rollie. That was awesome. Uh, but it's just not my thing. So this is actually Shelly full body stage and last but not least the basis. So I just need to redo that because I didn't save before Cubase crashed due to that weird bug. And uh, just need to change the impulse response there. So um, save. Okay, this way we're good. How do you use the iPad? Uh, that's, um, I try to show. Um, actually, what you can see here is Touch OSC uh, software to, uh, similar to Lemur, where you can set up your own controllers. And I have, for example, a bunch of faders right here for different MIDI, uh, uh, MIDI CCs. Um, like CC11, CC01, mod wheel, expression, and whatever you need. Uh, then I have an XY controller on the next page, 
which is kind of using the whole pad and I can I don't know whether you can see that in the video uh, where I can control uh, mod wheel and expression at the same time through XY controls. Um, you can't see it here because I think, oh yeah, there it is. Um, yeah, it's, uh, are you connected wirelessly? So yeah, it's uh, connected through my internal network here through uh, Wi-Fi. And um, where have we been? Actually, I recorded some, I had some nice chord progression back then before Cubase crashed. I hope I can get that back, uh, what it was. I think I know what it was. But first of all, I had some strings here in front. Let's give these guys a little bit more reverb. and uh, get these strings back in here. So for these guys who uh, just tuned in and uh, don't know what I'm doing here with less when we're talking about soaring strings. So soaring strings is actually only legatos and sustain sounds. And since uh, I wanted to do a little bit more with it, try to come up with a cue or something, I was looking in my libraries what comes closest in terms of sound uh, to the soaring strings and since they went uh, with mid-size ensembles for the recordings so not full string uh, not full violin section one and stuff like that I went with um, for example when I want to add uh, spiccato uh, articulation I went with LA scoring strings since these allow me to combine uh, DVC sections within the uh, instrument group. So violins 1A and B, for example, spiccato, give me a smaller sound than the full section libraries that I have. And <clears throat> so through this, um, I can add in more articulations and not get away too much from the initial sound of soaring strings. So if I want to add in, for example, spiccato underneath, and you, you can just listen that here uh, if I record for example some celli spiccato underneath uh, that little melody that a little bit oh damn it and I also added in a little bit of double bass and I actually changed that to the B section because that sounded a little better I need to do that here because it didn't save I'll ice scoring strings spiccato Bases B. There we go. So, what's your favorite best soft synth based orchestral VST? That's really tough to say because it totally depends on what you're going to write, what kind of sound you have in mind, what you're going for. If you go for epic cinematic or intricate, uh, small, intimate sound, or whatever. Um, hard to say, not really a favorite, really depending on, on what kind of style I'm aiming for. 
So just recording these guys in as quarter notes. terabytes of samples don't ask don't ask um, so I just in the beginning of last week I just got me another uh, one terabyte SSD because they were damn cheap at the moment so I just got another one I have an um, external drive mount hooked up where I can just change the, the uh, the drives and uh, I had a 256 uh, SSD as an external one for some libraries and I just changed this to uh, a one terabyte now because I ran out of space for SSDs and uh, what do I have here I have um, one two two one terabyte SSDs and one two three four or five hundred gigabyte SSDs in my system right now. So that's exactly four terabyte SSD drives for samples and um, a lot of stuff, backups and all the other stuff that is not regularly my template um, on HDDs. And there I have a bunch of four terabyte uh, USB 3, uh, no, e -S -E SATA. SATA, whatever you pronounce that in English, no idea. Um, external drive and four more internal HDD drives for projects, uh, so Cubase projects and stuff like that for audio recordings. I don't use the SSDs for audio recordings, use a standard HDD. And this should be, uh, should be pretty much the same amount like four or five terabytes something like that so yeah pl plenty of space there but ssd space is really uh where where the heart is and especially when you're running a lot of sample libraries so right now the four terabytes are enough and i think i may rather go with uh I did that all the time, moving libraries to HDDs because you don't use them that often, putting smaller libraries to HDD to make space for bigger libraries on the SSDs. Anyway, you never have enough space and no matter how big the space on your drives is, you come to the point that you actually cramp them full, <laughs> no matter how much you have. So. Uh, I think it doesn't matter in the end. Uh, so why not uh, listen to what we have here and uh, try to make some music with that stuff. Actually going to delete all these uh, extra libraries we had here for the check before. I don't want to go into detail on these. Get rid of them. Um, what were the calls that I had before? There were... I think that's it. Let's try one more record of these. Ah, full soft.
actually just a guideline. Uh, I think I'm not going to use the full ensemble patch here. Uh, let's go with quarter notes to actually make them fit and put the modulation a little bit down and make a little bit more use of the soaring strings legato qualities nice chord progression there where I just need to figure out what we're going to do melody, uh, melody wise here um, actually had another idea last stream because some people were asking for what kind of chords I use mostly I don't know that from the beginning at all but Cubase has this nifty little function of adding a chord track and why not put that in um no do not use monitor tracks and actually write down the chords that i'm using here so it might be easier to follow so this is actually g minor D minor uh, that's E flat major or D sharp major and this is D suspended and going into a D there so this repeats and then we're going to G minor again so that way you actually have an idea what's happening here and so now what did I do here this is E flat major G minor this was really more improvised than anything else so this was an F major with uh, actually uh, can I edit that oh yeah I can so uh, uh, where do I change the root note? No. F ma oh there root note. It was an A. And this is actually a C with an E in the root. Then I went over to A G sharp major, A flat major. C C minor and finishing off on F suspended fourth going down to F major. So, that way I actually have an idea what I'm doing here. Hopefully. Back to the violins. Um,
<laughs> Not entirely, uh, entirely sure where I'm going. Here. Somehow this is sewing strings maybe in one. Ah, okay. The chord track is actually trying to play the monitor track. So how do I switch that off? I think I just muted. it. Yeah, that should work. Oh well, there were some nice ideas in there. At, uh, I think I just do a ghost MIDI track here. That is not connected. And there I'm going to send. Yeah, so. So, do I, can I somehow repeat what I've done here? Give me some click here. Okay, doing the violins and the violas in unisono here. First of all, let's give that a little bit of shape. So, eight notes, quantize them a little bit. I think I didn't do any click when I played that, so bear with me. And 
let's let's make a little bit of use of the Rebo function as well. Seems to have no difference whether I play with high or low velocity. Give it a little bit of a break there, just to make it visible. A little bit shorter here, and here I have another Rebo. do it in quarter notes da, da. yeah I'm no string player at all so I just try to imagine what a string player will do so let's quantize these guys a little bit more Once more, let's actually listen what we have here as a melody. Kind of the same chord scheme. Go back to D major there. Um, okay, let's flesh out the strings a little bit more. Bring down the, or actually turn off the full ensemble there because I'm not going to do chords, but rather try to come up with a little bit more labyrinth. 
string stuff here. Um, for the first part, I may go with a octave doubling for the violin. Just trying something. Uh, actually, the chord track is really helpful on top to have an idea where the lines may go. And actually, let's put these guys back by minus 30, I would say. So this legato a little bit way, not only a little bit, way behind. I think I'm going to double the celli, uh, the, the violins. Ending sucks big time, but we're getting there. later I'm just improvising a little bit based on the chords there so just lay down some basic
got plenty of stuff for some more stuff. Uh, fabulous. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Intro was nice, but uh, needs to go different direction there. Let's wreck up that for first. Why do I have... Okay, something went wrong here. Um. Okay, kind of a movement against the main melody. that here some holds in the courts there let's change the melody there this is the viola to the A. And actually the A is covered by the cellos. I don't really like that. Let's go to the um
actually that run there in the low basses does not sound good and we change that other way around first the low E then the high E give it a break there <laughs> Not a break, but rather a rebo. So let's make that the whole bar and give it a rebo there. gets a little bit distractive here with the, I really like the down run of the violence so I'm gonna focus on that <laughs> I think we're going to cover some of the melody, main melody, doubling that in octaves with a sustain patch. let's load the violins one again I think I'm just going for an octave sound here soaring strings there we go violins legato and 
these go to zero one. That's fifteen. That's actually fifteen. And then legato double. So just a second legato track. Just playing around a little bit. No idea what I'm doing here. So, uh, rather go. Actually, coming from E flat. Okay. So this is Put it all together and tweak a little bit to make it a little bit more even. Let all these guys start on the first beat here, please. I can die away a little more in the high string. Sixteen. Let's check the violins on their own. This is a violin one, and this is the double one. It's a little bit loud there. Two, 
rebow function. Just trying out some stuff here. First of all, let's bring this guy back the same amount as the original violins. Minus 60. Okay, so grab another listen. So, actually, that's the wrong one. The double and the low one. Okay, let's put it all in context and see. something is wrong here What the hell? idea of the works. Let's see, where are we? In full.
think I add in some chord information some more. I don't want to put the strings to full. I could add in obviously the harmonies in in the sustained patches, but I don't want to want to overdo it. Uh, so I rather add in another instance of contact. Put that here. And based on the last stream that we did, I actually got back to love the choirs from Project Sam, actually. These are pretty, pretty cool. So let's change the color here. Audio sense, let's go to can haul a little bit of that. I'll go into church, a little bit of that, a little bit more of that. That tone, maybe even or better to go with the ooh sound. Long ooh. So that's. And this is a classical uh, standard thing that we were talking about before. Now controlling um, mod wheel and expression at the same time with the XY pad from uh, TouchOSC. So that is pretty cool. Let's try it. This is Project Sam or a choir. Ooh. this together sounding nice let's quantize that a little bit actually want to do this an octave lower that together.
actually I'm hearing a little flute in the run there. Let's name the Vox. Add another instrument. Five, create, go for blue here. Um, nice little flute. Come on out. Come for Berlin Woodwinds here, I guess. Soaring, uh, yeah, exactly. Soaring strings, music assembling. That's what we're doing today. cellos from uh, less since soaring strings doesn't have any other articulation than legato uh, so we're starting on what was it E flat major into the strings on their own again. Did anybody mention epic horns? <laughs> That's kind of what I'm hearing right now.
So... Well, somebody mentioned horns. <laughs> so let's put them in. Hmm. Why not directly go to full blast? <laughs> yeah. There we go. Arc horns. <laughs> Um, maybe a little bit too much. We'll see. Can never have too much horn. Anyway. No. Give them a little bit of shaping. No, actually, not the SSL. Let's go with mix rack for a little bit of channel. Let's go with bread. Full drive, noise reduction on, and a little bit of EQing. This is yellow. Uh, M uh, one horns nine.
wasn't too bad. Some nice ideas in there. So... That's better. Kind of gets that ba da 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 da. Really gets kind of a hook that repeats throughout the instruments in different variations. Okay, let's try it. getting there. more ah. one more do you have to use kind of... of course I use compressors from time to time a big fan of the slate stuff uh, waves has some great compressors yeah. here go to eight notes
We need brass, we need brass. Let's go for what is my use? Mm. Okay, let's do it quick and dirty. a little bit a little bit more of stage uh, sent uh, close sound what did I play Something like that, going to add in a little bit mod wheel data afterwards. So this is uh, Sim Brass Long. short notes no soaring strings is really all about legato and sustains so there's no other articulation in there it's plain legato and sustains which makes me sad to be honest because i really love the tone of the library and i really 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 fingers crossed and prayers to heaven i hope that they expand that library in the future and actually get back in and record with the same players and with the same room and stuff like that uh, and record uh, more articulations to make it a full-blown library. That will be awesome. Um, so I'm going to record in some mod wheel data for the brass here. So, copy there, and actually I put that, what we have so far on loop for a minute or so and leave you alone and you can't stop it, you just can't listen to it because I just need to step out for a minute, we'll be back soon. Actually put it on loop.
so, and since I've missed it, let me have another listen as well. Sorry for the repetition there. But um, I think you will survive it. So, adding in a little low brass would fit well in a video game. Thank you very much. So, therefore, we are going for... Cinebras monster lows. That should be enough. That's in pro. Monster low brass articulations. There we go. go for the low brass in Albion. Brass low legato, where is it? There. put that underneath and get rid of the loop here support that and let's put that to a folder this is woodwinds and put this into a folder this is brass And finally, just for having it clean and tidy, choir, choir. Uh, I want to add some low woodwinds. Let's go with the Icini 
again. Um, <laughs> woodland low legato. We're just doubling the brass there. A little bit of close, a little bit of ambience, bring a little bit down. So, Actually, I know this does not belong to to the library, but I'm hearing a string run there for the end. So let's bring that just in and sorry, string. I think we have one patch left. This 15, right? So single string runs. Um, let's go with F major there. Turn the volume a little bit down. Actually, this needs to be 16. And 16 goes through stereo at 5. See if that works. A little bit softer. Yeah, there's sinner samples. Major. What's your story, Basement Max? Uh, what do you mean? I think we're lacking some percussion here. So, great point in time to actually bring that in. Pop that into a new folder. Perk. A little bit too lazy right now to 
check all the stuff in the mixer and route the subgroups. So, um, going for the lazy version here. <laughs> Sorry for that. sound actually arc has some nice percussion in there as well definitely need to get spitfires hand zimmer percussion <laughs> that is really something that i'm missing in my template how did you start in music uh at an early age i would say A little bit too much to talk about now. How it started out. We'll try to concentrate on the tune here now. Um, that might be some topic for later on. And go for Cineperk, Epic, This is Cineper Taiko. And another track. Cineper Symbols. volume way down there. Actually save that bitch. I think we haven't saved for an hour or so. How long are we actually streaming? Oh, three hours already. <laughs> Sorry for wasting your time out there. Uh, but I thank you very much for joining the stream. May I drop the information here? If you like these streams, you find a button below the video window here that actually says support the stream. And this is exactly what exact, exactly, wow, what you can do when you click that button because it takes you to our donation page. And actually, you can drop a coin or a few more there so i can keep on buying some libraries and uh, show you some new stuff and things like that so i would really really appreciate if some of you guys 
have something left, something fair to share with me. Anyway, um, we are at the symbols right now. So, and last but not least, let's add in some toms, tom groove, something like that. Let's go with, uh, let's see if I can use these guys. some reverb later on actually don't like the sound here um, let's take action strikes a little bit of stuff there midsection Yeah, let's go for these. And the cool thing is, with Action Strike, they can actually... Can play a little bit around with it. Strike terms. Uh, get these there. Uh, actually, there uh, no auto save. There actually is auto save, but it's kind of set to thirty of. 30 minutes or 60 minutes because um, it just gets annoying when you get all the instruments loaded not in Vienna Ensemble Pro but in Cubase that the saving time is so freaking long when you got running a lot of instruments and uh, so that way I rather do it manually than uh, automatically. That should be fine. quantize these guys oh wow a very first donation on this channel thank you so much egal 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 <laughs> that's awesome thank you very very much and um, yeah I really really appreciate it Thank you very much. And we go on with... Bring 
these toms a little bit down. They're a little bit too far in the front. And also I give them a little bit more reverb, I guess. Make them more roomy. So, adding in something more high end shakery type of stuff just for a little bit more movement there uh, going for the elements again and Let's go with the jazz brush. No matter with the odd amount, don't worry about that. I appreciate every cent that gets in here. Um, and since you're the very first, you get a special mention in the... <laughs> I think I need to do a top donator list or something like that. So uh, we'll definitely take care about that. So far it's, yeah, only contact VST for the track. So far it's only contact, yeah. Let's do two bars. A little bit of wiggle in the mod wheel for dynamic. <laughs> Duplicate these guys. So let's check it out. Actually, these guys are too late.
bit above a minute. Um, let's try to get back to focus onto the soaring strings for a little ending part here. Uh, to So, <laughs> Same again as I did before, just a little chord bed, something improvised. So we're landing on uh, F major. Uh, this is what I had in the beginning. That was nice. Let's go that route. Just a guideline, a rough one. Not too shabby. Actually give it at least one bar rest there.
may even go for the soft string ensemble here and quantize that a little bit and record some mod wheel data there. the violin that part that we had before kind of um, any keys which are touch sensitive so you can control dynamics with the pressure you put on the keys some kind of continuous after touch Besides the Roly keyboard, I'm not aware of anything that can does that uh, can do that. There are possibilities to remap aftertouch to another controller. Mm. I don't really like that. Um, so besides the Roly keyboard, I'm not aware of anything else that has dynamics control through key pe uh, pressure or anything. sure if I'm happy with this one but let's go with it for now uh, and I'm going to double that in the cellos or at least play a line underneath wasn't too bad. I love the intro of the cellos here. Damn it. A little 
bit too much there in volume. So, going for another, yeah, chorus welts. So there are mm, swells. It's a little bit thrown together overall, where for the sake of having a queue, just a bunch of parts. Improvising along the way.
Not too bad. What's actually happening in the legato strings here? Let's listen to that on its own. Let's do some brass on the last chord. Well, I actually freaking like it. That library sounds so awesome overall. Uh, just to have it safe, let's add in the chords here. So we have uh, G minor. Then we go to... Uh, D minor with an F in the bass. This is a B flat with D in the bass. G minor again. 
going to C with an E. C major with an E in the bass. Going to F suspended. G major. So this is that. Now a little bit of love for the master fader. Um, let's put these guys together. Soaring strings and the last shorts get to. guys go to this is choir don't make it too complicated here this should be woodwinds right Woodwinds, and this should be percussion actually, right? So, now the question is why is my treatment that I did to Oh, the brass treatment is still there. Okay. Um, actually, the brass needs an additional channel because I don't want that. On the other hand. What does it sound like? Not too bad. A little bit more of mixing here. Well, mixing. mix rack let's finalize with a little bit of first of all save the whole thing <sighs> and since I used the Brit before I'm gonna stick to that let's get the mix a little bit more clean here so, okay, this, 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 this goes into the set master. Set master gets actually the mix bus bit.
So I really keep it subtle here with the editing and mixing. Just put on the usual stuff. Slate rack just for the sake of having it there. Uh, doing nothing but coloring the sound a bit, so I'm not going to dynamically change there. It just, uh, I mean, it's obvious if you turn it off and on, if you just listen to the difference, it's crazy. <laughs> Just a little bit of um, shine. No, not the T-Rex. Won't go away. Cute tech. Get a little bit boost there. Add in again just for color. Do nothing but coloring the sound a little bit. Dude, giving it just a little bit, just a touch. And same applies for Fab Filter. Going with a film score, gentle and musical setting. Let's bump it by 3 dB, turn a little bit down, turn a little bit down for you guys so you don't get any distortion and then we should be good overall. Let's take one more listen to it and yeah, last but not least what was left to say. I really, really dig the sound of soaring strings. You can get close to the sound with other libraries if you have the stuff. Um, but they're extremely easy playable. Uh, the legato sounds great and they focus on just that. A ground legato, ground sustains. The Baked in vibrato is at least not controllable, but that's not the aim of the library. The, it gives you really that strong emotional tone. And um, I dig it. We'll straightly go into my template and enhance the other strings. And I'm pretty sure we will cover that later on. Uh, it really starts to shine when you layer it with other libraries because yeah, that's uh, really, really nice. So last run through, I just take a listen more to the track that we've done today. Just a little bit of something there. Uh, enjoy.
So. Thanks for posting the link. Thanks for the donation that came in. If anyone else feels obliged to do another one, <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, next stream will be on Monday, 8.30 p.m. Uh, covering cine samples, the cine orchestra. So every library from the Sony stage, that's gonna be interesting. Uh, hope you join then. Thanks for watching and see you next time.